Right, just that you guys know once again that today is another double upload day on this double of double upload weekends. So before you watch this video, make sure you watched earlier's so before you watch this video, make sure you watch the video from earlier on today. I'll put a link on top of the screen right now for you to check it out. If you have watched it, brilliant, get on with this one and we'll have a great time, hopefully winning some games. I nearly gave away what happened. If you haven't seen the earlier video, that would have messed you up a little bit. Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode where we are on the cusp of a cup final. All we have to do to get there is beat Chorley home and away in the semi-finals. In between those two games, we have Weymouth in the League 2 and we are now back on top of the league following us winning both our games off camera and Stockport not winning both of theirs. They drew one, won one, so very good stuff for us. In fact, we'll start there, shall we? We won both games off camera. 2-1 against Halifax, Paul Mullen and Harry Lennon with the goals in that one before a very rare Liam McCallendon hat-trick in a 4-1 win over Dover. Paul Mullen, obviously being very kind, deciding not to score the 38th goal of the league season because 38 goals means he'd have the National League record for the most goals in a season. So obviously, he wants to do it on camera today, hopefully against Weymouth. And as I say, for the league table, it's looking good for us once again. We're back on top of the pile, following Stockport County, winning one, but also drawing one game as well down here against Eastleigh. Now, you may remember last time we had the youth candidates come through, and I think the club are signing the best ones right now. But I did have a little look around other clubs. When I looked, it was only us and Southend who have had our youth intake preview. Since then, a few more clubs are having youth intakes come through. And actually, I might scout out all of Barnet because they have quite a good youth system. So, uh, reports, get scout reports on these guys for a week or so. But, I did scout Southend. And if we look at the scouting priorities, there's two players here who have got five-star potential, potentially. And I didn't want to pass up on it. So they've both signed contracts with me. I offer contracts to them. And um, they are due big compensation deals. 50 grand for Lee Taylor and 40 grand for Tommy Robbins. With potentially 70 and 85 down the line. So these could be very expensive transfers for us. I feel like I'm regretting it. It's a lot of money for potentially some very crap players, if I'm honest with you. But... I'm going to accept them both. Look, if they're good, then it's going to be worth it. Do I, the thing is, do I trust my scouts enough? I feel like I've just gone in, gung-ho, thinking I've done the right thing here. But Lee Taylor does have four and a half stars of potential at 15 years old. Robbins, okay, that was a bit of a waste, maybe. Uh, they are angry. <laughs> oh, no. Ryan. Ryan Reynolds is angry about this signing. Oh dear me. Well, what about... They're happy with Lee Taylor, though. In the meantime, uh, look at all these players set to leave the clubs. Right. What we need to do is offer trials to all of these players immediately. These are the best players leaving these big clubs, essentially, according to Football Manager. They're the best players. So, I'd like to think they'd all be quite good, as trials have been accepted, and they should be coming to us right now. Okay, so... We can start to probably offer some pre-contracts to these players, I think, as well, if they have got potential. And again, okay, four and a half stars there, five stars there, League One potential, could improve a lot, five stars, championship potential, championship potential, National League standard, okay, not so good, National League, League One, League One, right. These championship guys, let's sign up to contracts right now if we can. Brandon Clover, approach to sign. These are going to like build the basis of our youth teams going forward. They, they are going to cost mm, probably a bit of money. He wants us to put a deal on the table. Uh, can my assistant manager do the offer, please, on a three-year deal? Suggest they want a one-year deal on £300 a week. I, I do have to be sensible with money here, but I want a three-year deal. 250 three years 301 year how about 302 years then okay deal good if you've got championship potential i want to know about it also this guy had championship potential too center back 6-2 right contract approach to sign this is the best part about regen day all the players that are good get let go again he wants us to put an offer on the table 
mm, I don't think this £90 a week is going to be great, if I'm honest with you. We have to put £100 down at a minimum, so we'll do that. Suggest he wants one year £110 a week. If we put the money up a little bit to three years, surely, yeah, you'll have to see it, accepts that straight away. So those two are signed up already. Um, I think we might hold off, I mean, let's get the League One guy in, Oliver Turner, approach to sign. Maybe I'm being a bit premature on all of this, but, you know, I'd rather get them in. I mean, potentially these guys could make us a lot of money. So it feels a bit silly not to sign them up. Okay, so four players, the two championship players and the two League One potential players are all signed up. We'll see what the trials say for the other players down the line. Oh, it's been a very uh, intense start to today's episode, I must say. Also, James Jones winning player of the month and dedicating his award to me as I win manager of the month. Great month of March. Also, Ryan Reynolds, very happy with me for winning manager of the month. He's also very angry with me for signing a very expensive 15 year old. But I think if we, if we, look, if we say the money we've spent on these two players from Southampton, Southampton South End, sorry, if we spread their cost out over all these young players we're bringing in from the Premier League clubs as well, I think it's justified. Anyway, all of that build up, we've been recording for about 15 minutes or so already, um, and we're not even at the game yet, so I'll probably focus on the games now. So a very hectic start to today's episode, but if you haven't done so already, make sure you do drop a like on it for me, subscribe to the channel if you're around here, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm telling me if I should have signed those players or not. But FA Trophy semi-final first leg time, a way to Chorley to start things off. And the team is going to stay the same as it was for both games, actually, last episode. Although, Bryce Hosanna, back for 40... We won't play him in this game. We'll play him in the next game, I think, to sort of get him back to full fitness. But, Langton starts in goal with a back line of Lennon, Hayden and Toza, Medford Smith and French on the wing-back roles, with Garrett, Jones and Young in the midfield trio, with McCallendon and Mullen leading the line. OK, kickoff is upon us. Toza with a long throw. Medford Smith with the header. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. Off the crossbar, cleared out from the back. But a very nice start for us in the first leg here. Tozen out with another set piece, this time a free kick. Played short to James Jones, who puts it over the top. Just a little bit too much on it to absolutely no one. So Irwin, the Chorley keeper, hoofs it clear. Hoofs it very long, and it's won comfortably by Chorley players who nearly score an absolute wonder goal. I think Lington was beaten there, helped by the crossbar in the end to make sure it doesn't go in the back of the net. But a very energetic start to this game from both teams. Is that a red card? No. Okay, well, he's off, isn't he? That's, that's uh, far from ideal. Uh, Young, move into the midfield then, and you can be a playmaker, because that's what we need. Okay, well, this is far from ideal. Away from home, in a semi-final, down to 10 men. Jake Garrett playing today, because Tristan Needham actually might not still be on international break, but he was on international break with Zimbabwe. That's why Jake's in the team. And now Chorley with a free kick in an attacking area, and it's a... A specialist set piece there. They practiced that one on the training ground. No one marking the guy with the header. Luckily, his heading is atrocious and it goes over the bar. But Chorley are in command in this game now. We're down to 10 men. Six shots to four shots. They're looking dangerous. If we can get away from this, nil-nil, maybe sneak an away goal, that would be great. But I think it's damage limitation now for this one. You can see as well our back line, all of them on some decent ratings. They are stopping Chorley from coming forward. In the second half, actually, we have done better, to be fair. We are having more shots than Chorley now, but only just. And none of them are highlights. None of our attackers are playing well, though. I mean, it's a bit difficult, isn't it, for them to play well when they've got not really got a huge amount of support around them. Ha! <sighs> David Jones, on your come for Luke Young. He's not had a great game, really. Uh, Mullen is going to come off... For Angus, I think. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, he's on a 6-4. He's not doing anything in the game. We may as well swap him out for someone else and just see what happens as now Aaron Hayden's injured. What are Chorley doing to our players? I was about to make a third sub because I saw Tyler French had picked up a little knock and I thought I might take him off, but no, because we'll have Hosanna back for the next game. I won't take him off just yet. If I had, we would have been down to nine men with that injury. I mean, well, now we are down to nine men. I can't take him off. Right. Okay. 
We've got a bit of a gap down the right-hand side as we're down to nine men. Somehow still having more shots than Chorley. We've escaped here. I mean, well, we've not escaped yet. We've not escaped yet. We've not escaped yet. Luckily, that wouldn't go in the back of a net. This has been far from ideal. But at least we didn't lose. That's the main thing there. Down to nine men. That is frustrating. How? Oh, please, please, don't let that injury be too bad to Toza. I don't mind French's injury being bad. He's not very good. But Toza's fantastic. French, six to nine days with a Paul Groin. Oh, it's Aaron Hayden, sorry. Not Ben Toza. Aaron Hayden, four to five weeks. Oh, that's so annoying. And also, Garrett's going to be out for three games now, isn't he? Um, which is rather annoying. Ah, and the first few of our young players that we're trying to sign from Premier League clubs are coming through. Uh, ben Kova is the first one. He has championship potential. Good. What what position does he play? Left wing slash centre mids. Okay, we, we, we could do a centre mids. And also, uh, Oliver Turner set the sign for us too. Brilliant stuff. I can't, honestly, I just saw the championship league on potential bits. I didn't look at anything else about them. I don't know what positions they play or anything. Oliver Turner... Is a centre mid. Great. Okay, that's handy. Joe McGlynn is a, is a forward. Okay, we could do with a nice striker. Um, <laughs> that'll be quite handy. And then Harry Godsmark Ford is a centre back. Ah, okay. So we've got a nice range of positions. Now, what I normally do is allow you guys to rename these players via your Patreon subscriptions or your Twitch memberships or your YouTube membership, whatever they're all called. They've all got different names and it's confusing. I am doing that again this season, but I do want to hold on until the end of the season because... These players that we're signing from random clubs, right, they don't have player faces. And I'll be honest, I've never heard of any of them. Normally, I just let regens get renamed, but I think in this instance, I mean, this guy has got a real face, so maybe we couldn't do him. But still, I think because they're very young and they've not got faces in the game, I think it might be okay to rename them. So wait until the end of the season. We'll get a full, proper under-18 squad settled with the regens, with the new signers from South End, from these guys coming from Premier League clubs. And then I'll let you guys choose and rename them. Otherwise, the youth intake that we did have, which was, you know, at best a four-star player, isn't ideal. So I thought we'd get some better players in, get some more you guys renaming these good players. But now we have Weymouth in our way and we have injuries. So Hayden, off you come for Sean Brisley, who will play as the wide centre-back. He's slightly better at that than a ball player. Tyler French will come off for Bryce Hosanna and Jake Garrett will come back for Tristan Needham is now back from international break. So the team is still pretty decent. Medford Smith quite tired. Will Coca-Cola will come on instead. James Jones tired, but he's incredible, so keep playing. But they'll be fine. Submit the team, go to the game. Let's get the win we need. So kickoff is upon us here today. Weymouth are currently near the relegation zone. So I'll be honest, if we don't win this, it'll be rather frustrating, but we do have some tired faces on the pitch from the midweek cup game. Obviously, we'll keep tabs on the Stockport game. We didn't actually clock who they were playing today, but first things first, we have to win our games before we focus oh, focus on Stockport as McAllendon just rockets that ball against the crossbar, comes down, and we don't get much of the highlight after it. Corner for us, James Jones to swing this one into the middle, met by the head of Will Cocolo, who puts it wide of the mark. Unlucky there. Okay, it's not the, the end of the world. We're only 20 minutes into this game. Still plenty of time to go. Interestingly, again, uh, Bromley, who were at one point almost at a point behind us, they've dropped off massively. Looks like they may have lost a game at some point because they look like they are 10 points behind us again. So I feel like Bromley are out of the title race at the moment. It's still just between us and Stockport County as Young plays in Mullen, who gets into McAllendon, who... Puts it wide of the mark. So many good opportunities today. So many good ones. But we are bottling that final ball or that final shot. And again, just bottling it. Well, I don't think Stockport are playing today. Oh, wait. Have Stockport... Maybe Stockport have played already. Yeah, they're on 36 games as well. So they must have played at some point. I've not realised. And they lost. Okay, so potentially... Oh, no, this is a draw because we would be on 79 points at the same time. We're now drawing this one, so we're on 80 points. So they must have drawn. So if we win today, we'll go three points clear of them. Right. That's interesting. Let's get the goals we need, boys. As Needham into James Jones. Right, that's surely a red card. That's surely a red card. Good. Weymouth down to 10 men. We have to score goals now. Hosanna on the ball. 
Played it into Paul Mullen, looking to become the National League's highest ever scorer in a single season in today's game. Hosanna to put the ball into the middle. He does. Mullen puts it in the back of the net. And just as I say it, he scores his 41st goal of the season. But crucially, his 38th in the league. Which now makes him, in a single season, the National League's highest ever goal scorer. Congratulations, Paul Mullen. It's almost as if you're too good to play in this division and shouldn't be here in the first place. But there we go. Okay, and that crucially puts us three points clear of Stockport as well. And we are well, well, well ahead of Bromley and Notts County now, who might have to go, well, will have to go through the playoffs. Neither of those two teams are going to win the league as uh, Taylor Crosdale, a... Uh, Wow. I was about to say he's like a legend of lower league football in Football Manager. I mean, he is. He still is. And he still is for me right now because Weymouth could have drawn level there. But he thought, nah, I don't want to draw level. How How has he not scored that? I'm not even reacting to us hit the post at the end of the pitch. I am absolutely in shock at what we've just seen there. Well, I mean, that, that's why Weymouth are down the bottom end of the table, because they just can't score goals, apparently, and that's maybe why they can't score goals. That must be so frustrating. Imagine doing that in real life. That must be crazy. In the meantime, Hosanna collects the loose ball into Bristley, into James Jones, and can we get a second goal here to just put the game beyond all doubt with 15 minutes to go? Changes do need to be made in a moment's time, though. I was kind of just stood there in shock for a little while. Should have made them a few minutes ago, but still, it's going to be fine. Toza forward into Paul Young. Paul Young out to James Jones. McCallum done. Shoots. How many times are we going to hit the crossbar? In terms of changes, Jones off for David Jones. We'll bring Lennon off for Reese Hall Johnson. And, I mean, I'd like to take Ben Tozer off too, if I'm honest with you, but we still can. We could move him into centre of midfield and then bring Dan Jarvis on. Maybe a little bit risky doing that, but I do want to make sure our players are fully sharp and rested up for the cup game, which we need to win. But this one is almost like a... Oh, for goodness sake, Tristan Needham's injured now. Well, okay, another game with an injury. We've already made all the subs, so down to 10 men for the final few moments. Hopefully it's not a bad injury. Otherwise, we're going to be struggling in the middle of the midfield as Mullen puts his header over the bar, but that has to be... Right, the referee's given four minutes of added time. We're now into the sixth minute of it. If Weymouth score here, I will be fuming. Please no. Good, thank you. Please, yeah, that's, that's all right. I can take that. And there we go. Weymouth nil, Wrexham won. Big win, three points. Three points clear at the top. So how bad's the injury to Tristan? Three weeks. So two of our really key players in Tristan and Aaron Hayden are now injured. Also, Chorley Stadium's called the Bob Lucas Stadium. Wow, what a name. Also, before I forget, let's just make sure we training rest everyone for a day. So I feel like the, the nine-man game that we played against Chorley wasn't a real reflection of how good we actually are. Hopefully at home today, we batter them. And then, of course, battering them, we get to book our place at Wembley. So while we play one of our games, there are games going on in the National League, including Southend versus Stockport. OK, let's keep tabs on that one as we take on Chorley. We are going to play, I think, the same team as last time out. That's a lie. Medford Smith comes back on. Needham comes off for David Jones the best thing we can do I think there really but yeah like with injuries and whatnot we are missing some key players but I think we sh we should still have enough about us okay kickoff is upon us it's nil nil surely I, I can't remember where goals counting this or not but ideally we won't have to worry about it at all because we should be absolutely battering Chorley at home here today already three shots on the board for us but nothing really happening Kidderminster Interestingly, a 2-0 up at home against Notts County. I missed what the result was in that first leg, actually, between those two. I was too engrossed with the nine men that we had left on the pitch. So I'm not entirely sure if Kidderminster are coming back or extending a lead. I don't know. In the meantime, we just know we have to score some goals to make sure we get to a final. McAllen's header there is not going to help us do it. 
So, chance for us to put a ball forward over to Paul Mullin. He's not really done well enough with it, though. He was closed down by two players and the keeper, so maybe I can forgive him a little bit. But 35 minutes into this game, 10 shots to one shot. We are dominating. We are in control, particularly with 63% possession right now. But we're not converting it into any goals right now. Dressing room, thrash the arms, not good enough. Get out there and play good enough. We know we can score the goals. So where are they? Corner, not corner, long throw and basically corner then from Ben Tozer, but it goes to absolutely no one in the end. That was kind of a waste, really, if I'm honest with you. Erwin, the keeper for Chorley, gets ready to clear this one out from the back. And he does, all the way through to Bristley. Okay, that's good. Actually, all the way through to our keeper instead, Rob Lainton. He plays it out to Bristley, into the feet of Tozer. And now Tozer can bring the ball out to this near side of the pitch as Bryce Hosanna finds the ball to Paul Mullen with a bit of work to do to get a ball into the middle. Cleared only as far as Bryce Hosanna, who can get a ball into the middle himself. McCallendon's there. Off the crossbar again. How many times have we hit the crossbar in today's episode? Because I've lost count now. It is far too many. James Jones with a corner, though. Crossbar incoming. No crossbar incoming. Medford Smith is the man who puts that one in the back of the net. And that goal might just be enough to take us to Wembley for the cup final. He comes out of nowhere, Medford Smith, here. He runs from the other side of the penalty area to get there. That's incredible effort and determination from him. And it's also just another assist for James Jones this season. He must be over 30 assists now. And potentially another one there. Toes are putting that one just over the bar. 20 minutes to go. I am reluctant to make changes in this game. Because one, the bench is pretty thin at the moment. And we've not got great players on there. Two, we are playing well. And I feel like changes could actually upset things a little bit right now. As the referee nearly gets in the way there, I feel. But no, that has to be it now. 15 minutes to go, a James Jones wonder goal, his eighth of the season. That, ugh, surely we're in the final now. Surely we're in the final now. Great work for McCallum, by the way, to keep this in play. Then find Tozer. Is that the referee there? I think it, I'm not, yeah, that is the referee, Richard Hume. That is actually quite confusing, him being in the exact same kit as the, uh, the Chorley players. Yeah, he's just wearing a slightly different kit. That's why he didn't challenge anything. And there we go, right, 3-0 done it's done we've won we're through Notts County also pulling a goal back against Kidderminster we'll see which one of those teams have won but we've won our game and we've done enough to get ourselves to the FA Trophy final Wembley awaits us at the end of the season potentially twice if we have to go via the playoffs that late goal was just enough for Notts County to win their tie 4-3 on aggregate agonising for Kidderminster Harriers. Of course, Kidderminster and Chorley both in the National League North, the division below us and County. Stockport won, but they only go level on points with us. Of course, we were three points clear of them, weren't we? So, goal difference keeps us ahead. A game in hand. A trip to Wembley. Things are just about shaping up right now for us. Next time out, we have to do the Stockport County game. Obviously, that will have implications and it will probably go down to the final game of the season, I would imagine, against 22nd place Dagenham and Redbridge. Fingers crossed we don't bottle things there before we head to Wembley for the FA Trophy final. So I do feel like today's episode has been a little bit all over the place with signings and injuries and all sorts. Normally, I finish recording an episode and I think, yeah, I think I did pretty well in that episode. I recorded that quite well. And whilst the results today have been good, I have finished this and thought, I'm all over the place. Editing might be a little bit of a challenge to just try and pull things together a bit nicer, but we'll give it a go either way. Hopefully you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have done, drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Tomorrow we could be champions of the league and the cup, or we could lose both. We'll find out. See you later. Have a good one. Goodbye.